What's going on YouTube? WWF Hasbro Man here, back again with another video. We're talking NASCAR DFS again. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about the Dixie Vodka 400 at Homestead Miami Speedway on February 28th. Uh, please, give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for weekly NASCAR DFS content. All right, before we get started with uh, my picks for the race, I just want to review last week's cup race. Um, you know, I think it's important to show transparency in my results, uh, whether they're good, bad. Um, so last week, uh, road course, a, a very volatile kind of situation, just like a super speedway. Um, this week, we're, we're back to a mile and a half. Should be a very, a much more consistent, um, you know, race. The volatility of the accidents are, are really taken out of it. But Anyways, um, you'll see my lineup here. Uh, unfortunately, my cash lineup did not cash. Um, 160. This is the $25 double up. Um, so you'll see 60, top 160. I was 196. So I was about 36 spots off. Um, you know, pretty good drivers overall. You know, obviously you can see AJ, Alex Bowman, Eric Jones, Ty Dillon, um, you know, all right there where, where I needed them to be. But you know, William Byron and Matty D just kind of killed my lineups. Minus three, minus one. Um, you know, the negative place differential really, really bit me. Starting 32nd for Matty D, um, you know, finishing 37th, that really hurt. And then William Byron, um, really not till the end of the race did he crash out. But there wasn't a ton of cars uh, that were out of the race. So, you know, just by him crashing at the end, that really took it took him down and took my lineup down as well. But... Uh, back at it again this week. So let's get started. Um, you're going to kind of look at a summary here for me. Um, so over here on the right side, uh, the race the last five years, um, you know, the average or the amount of cautions and then the average cautions right here. Um, and, and keep in mind, you have two stage break cautions too. So, you know, accidents, incidents, you really only have about two and a half um, cautions a race, which is not a lot. Um, for 267 total laps. Um, you have stage breaks after 80, 160, and then the conclusion of the race at 267. So really long runs in this particular race with the minimal cautions. You can see um, I kind of went through and I tried to show you how much the, the, you know, the person that led the most laps, how many laps is that person leading, person that led the second most, and then the third most as well. Um, so, you know, 122 is the average for the most, 77 is going to be the second, and then 40 is going to be the third most. So, you know, dominators are going to be key here. You know, place differential definitely helps, but you need to hit these dominators. When, when a dominator is getting you 30, 40, 50 points, um, you know, coupled with possibly a win or a top five, plus some place differential, you know, you could be looking at some guys getting 100 points for this particular race. And if, if you're missing out on that 100 points, then, you know, you could be missing out big time. So this is not necessarily going to be the race where I'm going to suggest taking a bunch of, you know, mid guys, mid packs. Um, you, you're going to want to look up top and, and at least get yourself two of these top tier guys. Um, and for me, I'm going to get started here and, and we're going to talk about my first top tier guy. And that's going to be Kyle Larson. Um, you know, suspended last year due to an incident. Um, he's back. He's in much better equipment than he was before he got suspended. Uh, now in a Hendrick car. Starting 17th. So he still offers you some place differential. He's probably not going to get out front stage one. Um, but I definitely think he'll be in contention come stage two and the conclusion of the race um, for possibly the win. Um, you know, his last five starts here, he has one DNF, and then he has a 12th, a third, a second, and a fifth. So really good finishes. Um, he's been off to a very strong start this year. Uh, you know, I believe he finished top 10 in Daytona, which I know is a wreck fest. But last week he... He hung around the top 10 almost all day. I think he had an, an just a weird fluky crash at the end. But uh, I think Kyle Larson's looked great this year. And 
out of these top guys, that's going to be my play. Um, like I said, you're going to get, aside from Kyle Busch, you're going to get the second best place differential. Um, and, and I think he can even contend for the win. So first play is going to be Kyle Larson. All right. And then our second play is going to be starting 37th. And we might call this low-hanging fruit, but I, I think we definitely need to make sure we're looking at that low-hanging fruit. So Matt DiBenedento starting 37th, uh, you know, two bad weeks in a row. I don't think that streak's going to continue here. Starting 37th, um, Matty, Matty D's a good driver. Um, he, this is a really solid place differential play. Um, offers you a safe floor at 37th. Strong car. He has that Penske power behind him. Um, you know, he was good on mile and a half last year. He had um, 12th place average finish in 14 mile and a halfers last year. Um, you know, project him for that again here at, at, at Miami Homestead. Um, of those mile and a halfers, he had three top three finishes, which is really good. Shows that he can get up there and even contend for a win. Uh, so with that place differential, um, point per dollar, you know, he's one of my top three plays. So Matty D is going to be the second guy that I'm going to highlight in my core. All right. And then for my third driver, uh, again, I'll call it low hanging fruit, but you got to have this guy in. I mean, Tyler Reddick starting 35th. Uh, I think him and Kyle Larson are, are the two best drivers at this track. Just the way they can ride that top outside groove, they, they can get that car right up against the wall. They can get the fast laps up there. And as long as they can keep it off the wall, these two are both contenders. Um, Tyler Reddick starting 35th. Uh, you know, great put place differential play. Last year, his rookie season, fourth place finish. Uh, overall, strong a mile and a half uh, with a 13th place average finish. And, and he won here twice uh, in the Xfinity Series as well. So he's a proven winner at this track. Um, you know, at that salary, point per dollar wise, I have Tyler Reddick as my number one play. Um, so definitely make sure you're getting Tyler Reddick into your lineups this week. All right, and then last is not exactly just one pick, um, but I just kind of want to talk more about roster construction. Uh, and, you know, if we're looking at, you know, trying to grab two dominators, let's say our dominators are Harvick and Larson. And then, you know, point per dollar plays, we have great plays in the Benedento and Reddick. Uh, to get those dominators and, and to really try to get those dominator points, you're going to have to fit in these guys from the bottom. And, and most weeks, there's usually like, one, two, maybe even three that I'm like, oh, that's not a bad play. But personally, this week, they suck. I think they're all terrible plays at the bottom. Um, I've narrowed out, uh, kind of summarized it down to five, um, six, actually, that I think that y you could probably possibly play. Um, you'll see Newman up there at the top. Um, you know, Newman's a pretty consistent driver. Uh, last year on mile and a half, 16th place average finish. Um, I hear a lot of people in the community talking about Anthony Alfredo as their play. Possible, you know, Corey LaJoy. I don't really hear too many talking about him. Maybe he could be a sleeper pick. You know, he, he ran consistently um, in the 20s uh, at mile and a half or his last year. Um, a 24th place um, average finish. So, you know, maybe he's a possibility too. You know, Quinn Huff, Blicky, McLeod. I don't really think much of any of them. If I'd have to pick, I guess I'd pick Huff um, starting 38th. He can maybe get you some place differential, but I, I wouldn't expect much of anything. And, it, you know, I'd almost take Balicki and McLeod out, but I'm going to leave them in. Uh, you know, maybe they could cr hit 30th um, and, and maybe you want to use them to try to fit in three dominators. That's going to be kind of the only route I see. Um, if, if you really want to try to grab all those lead lap points, um, you know, taking three dominators, you could probably, you know, get a lot closer to, to picking two of the top three. But um, that's it. That's my video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button. Um, any questions, comments, post below. Love to hear from you guys. Um, you know, please subscribe to the channel and definitely we'll have weekly NASCAR DFS content.